And now we're going to have a special entry to our 10 minute Q&A session with a former residential builder and current commercial builder, Mrs. Chandra Myers from Georgia. So if you would uh, submit your questions in the chat box and I'll ask our expert to chime in with her response. And as you're doing that, let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Chandra Myers has over 15 years of experience in the commercial real estate industry, and as a member of the Georgia real estate community, she knows what customers demand. Now, prior to becoming the CEO of Webb Myers Construction, she used her vast knowledge to build homes in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Chandra gained valuable experience in every facet of residential site development and home building. She became a trusted source in the industry, building relationships with key people in the design development and commercial interior business. Her goals for each new client are simple. Deliver innovative strategies to uncomplicate the building process. Listen intently to assess clients' needs through effective communication. Identify ways to add value to each project. Service customers until they're 100% satisfied. She's worked with some of the giants in the industry, such as Grady Hospital, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Walgreens, and Kaiser, and did a job for Super Bowl 53 held in Atlanta. Now, Chandra's story is obviously unique. I'm going to let her tell you that story in just a moment. She's going to share cost-saving tips that may help you when considering buying a new construction home. And when Chandra was a residential home builder, her homes began in the half-million-dollar range. Chandra, welcome to the seminar, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with our members. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Glad to have you here. Now, if I recall correctly, you actually came up with the idea to build a home the way that a mother of a large family would like to have it constructed from the wet room or mud room for dirty clothes and wet sweaty clothing and sports equipment to the washer dryer area and the like. Is that correct? That's correct. It's the name of my company was Homes Built by Mom and some of the things that we were integrating into our space is like a homework station. Um, it was a dual homework station actually for kids to be able to do their homework so they're not at the kitchen table and mom's trying to get dinner done and they have to clear all that off so we took care of that. We had a laundry chute in the house because the kids bedrooms were upstairs so that mom is not taking clothes upstairs and downstairs. We had an SUV garage which was a little larger than normal. That's back when the big SUVs were really popular and long mm -hmm. so we made it easier to get in and out. Um, so those are some of the things that we integrated into our plan back when I was building homes. Nice. They really sound like they would be, you know, very efficient homes, I guess would be the best word to put it. Okay. Fantastic story. Greatly appreciate you sharing that with us. And we've got a few questions that are coming in now. So I want to jump right into that. And this question comes to us from Karen in Austin. She says, how does a new construction home purchase work? What's the process? Well, typically, the first thing you've got to do is get pre-qualified by a bank. Yes. Um, you've got to understand what it is that you can afford um, and what's going to be comfortable for you on a monthly payment. Um, and so you've got to get your budget together. Yes. The next thing you want to do is get an idea of what your needs are. What are the things that you must have and what are the things that you want? Yes. Um, you have to be very clear about that because those things will oftentimes drive up the price, um, then you have to be prepared to have some money to put down going toward the purchase of the house. So that's typically called earnest money and the builders are going to want to see you, um, you know, have some skin in the game mm. before they start to either break ground or move forward to moving forward in the uh, contract process. And then of course you'll contract and then you'll either buy standing inventory or you will build. Ah, okay. So you see a subdivision and there's a sign clearly in front that says new homes for sale. And let's say there's one home that's been built and you actually go in and it's completely staged. Is that what you're going to base your decision on or is there going to be, I'm, I'm going to assume other floor plans and possibly, you know, photo galleries to, to review. But that particular home, I think when you see a situation like that, that's called a spec home, right? That is correct. And so typically, you know, they have plans that are already on site that they have priced out. And so, you know, it's usually a range of pricing in there for you to pick from. 
and, and with a different amount of rooms, whether or not it's on a basement, how big the slab is. Um, so if you've got like a master in the guest room on the main, that floor plate is going to be very expensive compared to, you know, one that has a bed, one bedroom on the main and a rest are up. So typically now what you're starting to see in this market is houses are going straight up using very small parcels of land mm. um, and building, that, you know, the height of the building, using the, the sky because it's free. Sure. <laughs> and they're building taller homes. With less acreage, and subsequently that means you know, you're going to have less yard and then probably less maintenance. But, as you said, the air is free above where you're building, so it's more <laughs> advantageous to go up. Okay. Um, so, you said something that was interesting there. You said standing inventory. Now, I'm going to assume that just means the obvious. A home that's already been built, and it's sitting there, but it hasn't been staged, and of course it is available for sale, right? Yes. Okay. So, is it is it easier to get a better deal on a house that's already been constructed or would it be better to just simply go in and say okay I want to build this house on this parcel and here are the things that I want what would you say I think if you if you can buy something that has standing inventory the builders of course want to try to get that off their books as quickly as possible okay um, and that's why you know uh, it's very advantageous one you want to make sure that the subdivision is it's actually moving inventory. Hmm. I would not like to be the first homeowner um, to buy in a subdivision. Maybe third or fourth, but definitely not the first one. Huh. Um, you know, I would I would leave that to someone else just to make sure the thing is going well. Uh, why would you? you, know, you, you can even why is that important start. though? Well, you just want to make sure that the builder isn't in jeopardy of going out of business. Uh. Um, you know. In, in the past, there's been circumstances where, you know, the builder, you know, didn't make some good financial solid sure. decisions, sure. and then they weren't able to complete the subdivision, and then you get a whole another builder coming in building something different, maybe at a different price point. So there's, you know, there is a reason to kind of wait it out a little bit and have a more established community uh -huh. if it's a new community. Ah, okay, great tip. Love that. Um, we have Marvin from Milwaukee. He actually says, how do you execute a contract with a deposit toward purchase uh, of the home and what happens next? Well, Marvin, she actually answered that uh, in, a, in her answer to question uh, one from Karen. So we won't have to go through that. Uh, let's see. Alexandria in Phoenix. How long does it take to build a home? Um, it takes anywhere from four to six months, okay. uh, depending on the time and the season that you buy. Of course, if you're buying and, and it's raining or it's snowing, the incremental weather makes it a little bit difficult for any builder, you know, to pour the slab um, and do the framing. Sure. Um, but once we get the building buttoned up with the roof and the exterior walls, the wrap is done, the process goes really quickly. Okay. So, yeah, that's something to certainly take into consideration if it's inclement. Obviously, outdoor conditions are not going to be conducive to doing all the things that you just mentioned, and it's going to take a longer period of time for the home to be completed. Okay. Um, actually, Chandra, that's it for our questions. Would you share some of your cost-saving tips for uh, building or uh, buying a new construction home versus going with a resale? What are some of the things that you've done yourself or had, let's say, negotiated with uh, buyers of your homes? Well, I mean, if it, what I would always do outside of the flooring, you can kind of go with the standard product and upgrade as you can afford to. Yes. You will avoid builder markup um, oh. and, and, and save a good bit of money on some of those finishes if you just get their very plain finish. And then you could just hire one sub to, for example, if you wanted to, update um, maybe the island in your kitchen and you wanted it to be really uh, something more signature piece. Mm. That's something that I would do later. Um, if you have a three to four bedroom option, you can opt to not finish one of the rooms yeah. um, and you can finish it out later. It's a simple paint and carpet, you know, to finish those out. Yes. Um, but again, you're avoiding builder uh, markup as well. And then, as I mentioned before, just getting to save money, you know, again, getting something that has a minimal amount of floors on the first floor and you're taking advantage of the height because uh, a big part of your construction costs 
is going to be the slab and pouring that slab, uh -huh. whether it's a basement or even if you're building on on a slab, you know the the width of the slab is based on the floor plan. So you want to take a look at that. Great tip, great tip for sure. And you mentioned not finishing a bedroom. What about a basement and foregoing that for the time being? And then as you know, a buyer's financial situation or picture uh, improves, they can come back and certainly do a finished basement if it's you know built into the home. But absolutely, okay, always. And I've even seen some clients ask to you know have unfinished garages ah. because they have something that they want to do inside of it. So you know, not putting up the drywall and different things like that. So. You know, there's a bunch of areas where that you can leave things unfinished and finish them later and it'll save you some money on the front end. That's excellent. And if you would, last thing, would you share that cost-saving tip on the time of month that you discussed with me uh, the other day? Yes. So now that I am out of the residential space, <laughs> I too was a home buyer as of late, and I found it really advantageous. It was, I want to say, maybe a $40,000 advantage for me waiting to the end of the month because when you are dealing with a major home builder in town, and I'll leave the name out, yes. um, they want to get those things off their books. They don't want to have to pay the interest rates, and sometimes the interest rate is worth you know, a good bit of money to them. Sure. Um, and what they'll do is they'll either throw in uh, things that you know you would normally pay for an upgrade. Sure, incentives. Uh, and I've got I got a ton of upgrades uh, just because they wanted to get the deal done before the end of the month. Is there a better season to do that, waiting until the end of the month as well? Um, I I think it, it it's neither here nor there. Okay. You just got to find the the builder that just has you know once they start going and you're somewhere in the middle and they've got some inventory sitting there or they have or they're starting to build it but it, you know all the finishes aren't picked out that's a great time to you know just kind of be in their ear and a, an, another good deal is to tell the agent call me when this drops down to a certain number sure and then last one because you uh, this came from Sandra in Anderson uh, South Carolina she says do you think it's better to work with a smaller builder or a larger company, and I think she's re relating back to uh, that comment you made about waiting until maybe three or four homes are built in the subdivision if a smaller builder gets, you know, kind of jammed up financially. What What's your thought on working with a well, big company or a small builder? I, I think either is fine. Of course, I'm not going to say not to do anything with a small business. I mean, I'm a small business owner. I was then. And, you know, we did just fine, but I would, you're going to have a little bit more uh, latitude for negotiating with a larger builder. Huh. And sometimes you, the same with the smaller. It's just the risk is just what it is. If you're dealing with a smaller company, there is some risk there. But, you know, the product and the product could be worth it, you yeah. know, because they can offer you more because they're not a big machine. And so, and as you said, big builder may have greater economies of scale and saving because of how much they purchase and supplies and materials on a regular basis versus a smaller builder who just may be um, stressed and want to move the inventory and, you know, get out of those construction loans, right? Correct. Okay, awesome. Well, Chandra, that is it. And we really appreciate your time. I am going to uh, post your contact information here, but... Uh, to our viewers and members, uh, this is only for commercial building purposes. Uh, Chandra, is, again, is no longer a residential builder. So if you have a commercial project that uh, you'd like to discuss with her, by all means, contact her at uh, Web Myers Construction, a uh, service, excuse me, at WebMyersConstruction.com. And Chandra's website is WebMyersConstruction.com as well. Chandra, thanks so much. I greatly appreciate you spending time with us. And those tips that you gave were absolutely fantastic. And there were certain things in there that I, you know, hadn't heard and some things that I recall from a long time ago. But um, I know that our viewers and members will greatly appreciate that. And we'll use the information going forward. So we greatly appreciate you. And uh, any last parting words, anything that you may want to add before we go? Um, just 
buying a home is a big investment. Just choose wisely. Yes. Thank you. Because, um, uh, I, and I think I want to ask this, uh, setting the expectations properly for buying a new construction home, what are some of the things that you would advise or recommend just to, you know, again, set expectations properly and not uh, get too emotional about what happens during the home building process? Anything? Yeah, I, I would just, you know, encourage everyone to make sure you set a, a budget that you can live with. Don't overextend yourself on your home. Yes. It's a big investment, and you don't want to get caught on the wrong side of not being able, you know, to make your payments. So just make a solid decision about what it is that you can afford, and then stay there. Don't make an emotional purchase, and you know, go further and overextend yourself. Excellent, awesome, beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time that we have for this Q and A session. If we didn't address your question, be sure to check the chat or submit it. In the